I'd like to welcome everybody back to the message. For you guys that have been following me a while, you guys know I have multiple multiple accounts. I have three brokerage accounts and a couple of uh, individual Roth IRA accounts of a self-directed nature. <clears throat> and every now and then I roll these out for review so we can kind of track the progress, um, see uh, where I'm building out, um, where I'm taking some profits uh, if appropriate. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna jump you into the uh, taxable joint brokerage account. Um, this is a, a over a hundred thousand dollar account here, so um, rather sizable. Uh, but I think really the takeaway for you guys is I want you to understand what's possible in investing, and I'm here to provide a tutorial um, on what is a, what is uh, possible as a self directed investor. Guys, please enjoy. <music> Occasionally, I roll these videos out to uh, provide some updates to where we are. Uh, this is my larger taxable brokerage account. Um, this is one of three taxable brokerage accounts that I own. Um, there's some um, passive aspect in this portfolio. There is some dividend growth in this portfolio. And finally, there is some speculation in this portfolio, and this is really speaks to the to the broader uh, benefit of social media. I mean, ten years ago, I don't I don't think people were doing this. I don't think for people were being as transparent, um, at least from my perspective, because uh, I don't put these videos out to say, "Hey, look at me! I've I've got all this money." I, I think money is relative, uh, and what that means is there's a lot of people out there with a heck of a lot more money than me. Um, but I contend that there's probably a few people out there with less. I, I think there's people out there that are starting out. I think there are people out there that would uh, benefit immensely from sitting back and kind of looking at how uh, certain investors deploy their capital. There's no two portfolios the same. So I think when you tune into a video like mine or, or many others, and, and even you can see some of the differences in how I um, how I form different accounts to create the total uh, portfolio from a comprehensive perspective, but this is how this shakes out. Um, for you guys that know and tune in to me, the, the ARC KK was really one of the newest additions to this portfolio. It just made sense. Add a little bit of a, of a passive diversified arm of growth into this. I was glad to do so. I obviously liquidated it in my other account here just recently. I'm taking some very nice profit and leveraging into it uh, in, in a new portfolio direction. So I did want to retain some of that uh, managed ARK ETF exposure within my brokerage account. So it was a very simple decision uh, to carry that over here and establish a nice 25 share position. You can see here on the top end, Amazon just seems to fit nicely in the taxable brokerage I think owning Amazon is is a, is difficult to do long, at least for me. Um, but I'm I'm attempting at doing just that. I'm I'm attempting at building a position in Amazon, um, so I can get to that long term capital gains category, and um, I can just benefit from having what I what I think is the premier discretionary name um, in the space. I I just don't think there's any better. Uh, I, I do enjoy discretionary filled out by Home Depot, McDonald's, and Leggett and & Platt. Leggett and & Platt being in this portfolio here, um, the other two names being absorbed in the Roth IRAs. But uh, discretionary is a, is a tough, tough sector to fill. Um, TJ Maxx in a much uh, smaller amount is in the dividend growth portfolio. But uh, nonetheless, Amazon here kind of on the big growth side of the house. Um, and then Boeing here with a long position. I just wanted to grab this. This really seemed like a nice position here. Boeing is a huge company. Um, they're really going through and hopefully coming out of what has been just a terrible last couple years. Um, so this position is a is a, a, a five year position. It's really put in here long and uh, really be nice to see a Boeing um, get back to its old self. And I, I really see this position being very, very valuable down the line. Um, is it going to be $210 in five years? I, I think not. Um, and I think it's going to go through the progressions. I, I, I th would venture to guess that it's probably going to be more like a $500 stock in five years as opposed to 
you know where it is on these current levels but it's it's left out for dead right now on the street and and that's fine usually um, that's where you want to pick up opportunities like this but um, Boeing, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy to own Boeing here. Uh, financials uh, in, in this particular brokerage account anchors my financial exposure. Um, I do own contracts against Bank of America. I do sell some premium against Bank of America. It's done quite well, um, up 10%, very nice. That was one of my stocks to buy for sure. Um, you know, had you taken my awareness piece and taken a, a second look at Bank of America, I think you would have seen what I saw um, in the big banks. I own all five big banks here. I'm, I'm a, a little bit more bullish on financials than the average bear, um, which is fine. I enjoy owning a nice exposure to financials, and, uh, and uh, Bank of America just helps me do that. Right below that is Bristol Myers Squibb. Um, initiated a pretty big position here. It's dipped, and, and I don't know why. Uh, it's undervalued, and that's fine. Uh, we're um, happy to own 100 shares of Bristol. I'll own these long. I, I'll own Bristol for a, a lifetime. I, I have no uh, qualms whatsoever. Um, this here, this little bit of a hiccup, um, was an average down in Bristol. First 50 share block was established and then uh, it, it followed down and I went ahead and bulked up that, giving me the option to sell some premium against Bristol. I think I checked and I, I don't think it's that attractive. Um, so based on the last um, premium numbers that I crunched, it may not be uh, workable. That's fine. We'll just own the stock outright and, and continue to uh, uh, accumulate shares on the dividend reinvestment program. But uh, you can see here my conviction uh, speaks to my bullish thesis on Bristol. Um, Disney, fabulous. What can I say? Very happy. It seemed to fit nicer in this brokerage account. You know, big Dow component I want to own forever. And we're going to try to build this out. And really the strategic vision here is to give myself some drop points for some new cash. Yes. Um, eventually I'm not going to hold such a huge position in Hylion. Obviously this thousand share position here is 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 uh, it takes up the lion's share of, of the brokerage account. That's fine. Um, we're going to take that up to a, to a speculative you know run up. Um, I, I, I foresee Hylion being a nice payday here in, in five years. Um, I, I think in a year, a year, year and a half, two years down the line, uh, I think I'm going to have some decisions to make and, and uh, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to monitor the stock here. I, I'm super happy to be a, an investor in this fine company, um, but this is really my, my speculative play in this portfolio. I, and we're gonna continue to monitor it. I think I was down, I was in some deep water here. It's just turned back into the black and that's totally fine with their recent news on their battery, uh, their proprietary battery system. Uh, all good news uh, and we live to fight another day. General Dynamics I had in some deep water there for a while. Uh, it also is back in the black. Uh, uh, triple buy ratings across the board on General Dynamics. It is currently undervalued right here. Um, values getting a new look-see. That's why some of these good quality companies that everybody has just since forgotten um, are, are now returning to some favor. Uh, Duke Energy, I took a little bit of a trim back. I'm glad I did. It was a perfectly timed sell point. It run up to 95 really, really quick, and I was just going to rebuy uh, a, a put contract for me. I opted not to do that and just enter into more of a conservative position here. And I, I think that's smart because I was overweight industrials. Excuse me. I was overweight utilities. So that's what prompted my decision there was I look at areas of weakness and overweighting in my portfolio constantly. It's a habit of mine. I would encourage you guys to do the same, whereas if you're overweight utilities, it's a good candidate to trim. And that was a perfect opportunity where I had an overweight sector with an opportunity to trim, take profits, win, uh, enter back into the stock at a lower price, and boom, that we're there. Perfect, perfect execution there. Um, not to toot my own horn, but that one worked out well. That was nice on my part. Um, Leggett and Platt, I, I also own contracts here. I believe it expires here in a day or so. Um, we'll win on that contract. And Leggett and Platt's a nice stock to sell some premium against. Lockheed Martin is uh, gaining a little bit of steam. This is one of those that I could care less where the stock price is on any given day. I'm obviously down a few bits. Lockheed Martin is my best value pick for industrials. It is the best value right here. 
uh, to be had. Uh, say no more. Glad to own. This is a nice big position in Lockheed. Nice $8,500 position, man. I, I, I couldn't think of a better place to put my wealth in the defense sector um, of industrials. Lockheed Martin gets it done. It's my absolute favorite uh, pick in the space, at least on the defense side. You know, 3M is, 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 is also one of my favorites as well. But uh, Lockheed Martin, man, it, it gets it done. Uh, Altria Group here has uh, finally snuck black back into the black. It really was waving at investors in that uh, upper 30s mark. Um, that was a steal for Altria Group. Uh, really kind of stupid, to be honest with you. I did the best I could to push that out to the group and let folks know there um, that that was an extremely undervalued pick that showed up in my undervalued pick lists a couple months running. That, that was um, uh, what what I would consider shooting fish in a barrel. But there it is, uh, back in the black a little bit at 4500 um, I do occasionally uh, sell contracts against or sell premium against uh, Altria Group as well. Uh, rounding it out here, Southern Company have a nice healthy position here, 100 shares. Uh, I don't sell premium against Southern Company. The premiums on utilities just aren't that good. Um, AT&T, I probably need to reinitiate. I just had some fat contracts on AT&T, expire worthless, which is a fantastic thing uh, in the options world. Uh, but having, you know, the, the three contract capability for me, that's a good way of generating some extra premium in this portfolio, um, that of which I've just now uh, successfully uh, closed out my first three contracts on AT&T and uh, we, we made the premium and uh, and they expired worthless and then to round out the portfolio here um, I foresee a few hundred grand in this someday um, this is indicative of a starting position for me uh, and also acknowledging how far I think the stock market has run uh, and and how I really don't want to get too crazy on on passive total market ETFs I just think we're in a phase now where the stock pickers are ended up winning and there's still a lot of value uh, to be had uh, in the value space. So with that, guys, we'll kick you back to YouTube and we'll conclude the video. So I appreciate you guys staying with me for the uh, for the entire video. Uh, if this inspires you, uh, I, I hope it does. I really do. I think the whole purpose of my message through empowering one investor at a time is to bring more people to the investing opportunity. That's all. Wealth building is is just as easy as, you know, sitting across from somebody understanding how they seek their uh, exposure. I think it's uh, there, there's no better uh, opportunity than to be provided examples of how somebody like me uh, seeks out my exposure to the market. Now, this has taken many, many years to build up, guys. And the last thing I want to see is people making their way into my message and trying to emulate what it is that I've been able to build up over many, many years overnight. It's not going to happen for you. Okay. But just like me, I started with a few bucks and started to, to, to start that churn in the portfolio. Get yourself, get your mind right, get yourself in a wealth building type of discipline. And eventually the years will stack up and the dollars will start to stack up as well. And you'll start to render those results from a well-laid plan. Guys, if you appreciate the message, I want to make sure and subscribe to the community that we've got building on the Independent Investor Channel. Share the message with friends, family out there, anybody you know, bring them onto the channel. They can benefit from the message. Uh, just like everybody collectively, man, is benefiting and, and wealth building from this message. That's why I always say congratulations when you make it onto this because um, it's life changing and it will, in fact, change your life. Uh, on the ground level in your day-to-day -day activity, guys. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Thank you so much for tuning in with me and good luck in your investment future.